Ông quay cho Ông chúng ta có cảm tốt Chúng ta có thể tìm thị xã mạng ca Hay xã mạng ca Thế này Ông chúng ta có thể tìm thị xã mạng ca Một tốt xã đập cầm Nẹ chùm niên Phí chí lưu vang Mình chọc làm gì thăm là cá lúc em hỏi là đi cao bị thân là phía bọt miền áo bọt miền phía kỹ nợ một khu này ở nhập đẹp có hỏi chưa nhà chỗ rùm được không cách là cá sẵn là cá ngày đi xung cục lục thiên xung rạp sợ là cá ngày đi làm chí còn xung có khinh thang cục phía kỳ thẳng ơ đi đường đấy đi miền bọt miền đi lại được luôn chia miền bọt miền nô bằng tục không luôn càng cọm xa sợ là cá ní đời lúc nào xong lẹp bóng sức miền vật ở miền đất tốt vì bằng tục sợ nạc ca nổi ngày này đi khách lẹp bóng sức rộng bó lúc nguồn chia bàn bọc cột đó cả làm chi rồi hơi nẹ chấm đến đây là trông một đó sẽ cây cam bánh chọc được ngày này cứ cả nhà thích là vãi cả nhà miền vật ở miền đất hơi được không bằng tục sợ nạc ca này được ngày đi đây miền đau bằng đăng ra bằng đi bằng rong mùi rụp để miền xa niếm PTC PTCCP P rồi cao sắp bằng bay xong ở quân lục thiền bảo ở quân lục em hỏi chị bóng đi ở nhà mẹ xong rãi lưu dùm là xong nó bỏ chung chọc cho nôn chia chứ muốn thân ở nhà mẹ bàn đất tui lịch khách xong lẹ bóng sức cho rùm sạm nạc ca để tỏa lạc nông bà tục sạm nạc ca ní bỏ chung chọc cho nôn chia cho thay chị đọc bí khai tù lai chân nạp bí bọn đọc bằng mùi để bàn mà chạy tha để con viên bánh hào tổng cập hiếp chứ có ba chơi chân kèm này cười dù bán mà nãy bị chọn ở rộng bàn dũ, nâng đảm bày miền là tập hiếp cho rùm sạm nạc ca nền khai kháng mốc ở miền bất sân tập hiếp luôn thông lẽ bằng sân cho rùm nâng miền bất miền đại phục tố nơi khẩn tục sạm nạc ca nơi thằng ngày tí đọc bì khai tổ lai chân nạp bì bọn đọc bổ mùi bàn khơi cầm nọt hai bình đất thông cập hiếp chân chập dọn nguồn chìa để thuê lăng đại cụ bẹt bởi trang ca bì nịt phía ba thay tổng thông cập hiếp chân chập dọn nơi ở vô tổ có cho thằng ngày ต้องให้ที่ดอกมุ้ยใครตัวลายชนะปีบอลดอกบอลมุ้ยบ้านก่อนตรงก็ปีสันนิพิบสกปรกพอลูกนุ่นเชี่ยนในทางไหนนี่ทำมีนาการะชื่อจังไก่เจ็บจ้ำกุยยูการได้ชื่อคลั่งให้หนึ่งมาพดอลอนุสัตถาทรงไปเอาหยิบได้อันยาดไอลูกนุ่นเชี่ยโจรุ่มตามนานกันจำนาคาสัมมาคาปีบรรทุกมุ้ยเถิดกรอมซาสัมมาคานี่ไปเรื่องมูลฐานนี่หนึ่งโยงตามบัตรปัญญาในวิทยาไปถึงมุ้ยพรำในวิทยาเตยขนองอวตารก็อ่องหยิบได้อันยาดไอคุณจะจอดนุ่นเชี่ยโจรุ่มตามนานกันจำนาคาสัมมาคาปีจำง่ายปีมันตบคมครัวมวยทัดกรองสาสัมมาการนี้ตามมีเยอะประกอบสอตู้สำหรับเยอะเป็นสัมมาการเป็นมวยไทยนี่ประกอบบกลักไทยสอตู้เยอะประกอบสอตู้สำหรับเป็นเยอะเยอะหนุนชีไอโจร่วมในตามบ้านกันจำนาการสัมมาการในคำลองปิ้นสัมมาการสำหรับไทยนี่ไอมวยนกดาลวิทยาชุนเตอร์เมดิวิกาเปียกระดีลูกคือตุ่มพ้อนมาเอาอย่างเดียวดาลวิทยาชุนเตอร์เนี่ยจุ่มเนี้ยดำไปเมียนกากรทำกอลเคลย์มาสันบะเมียนเนี่ยเนี่ยจุ่มนี้เมียนบอมนองเธอได้ใช่ไหมสมจริงขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานเนี่ยจุ่มนี้สมบัติคุณรับประทานขึ้นสมบัติเกี่ยวกับอันเป็นฐานะระบบยำสำหรับแต่จะได้แต่ถ้าเราปรับนี่จะมีจำนวนความท่าฐานะระบบยำดักท่าจีกัญญาแพ็กดีลาวายถ้าขยมขยมอเมมันเจเนได้บานรีบกาให้สมอยกายปลายจำนวนนี้ก็ได้ให้สมอยไทม์อสอทุ่มทุ่มปีขังดาววีหนึ่งปีปีขังดาวนี้จะสอทุ่มพอง bà ông quân ông quân cho nên là bỏ làm biên đi bà thì bắt đầu từ này bắt đầu về cái chuyện từ cầm dạ mình từ cái việc đấy để mình bắt đầu cái tăng thêm rồi đó ở chỗ phố này chấm liền hay xong bây giờ thay ta cái bài chạy về liền giang bây giờ hay đầu tiên mình từ cái việc đấy khi xong phó hay nâng mình từ cái việc đấy nôn chía hay về liền này cái nâng xua đánh đầu ở chỗ phố này chấm liền cho lục mình từ cái việc đấy นูนเชียมีบำรองทุเรนเปียนนะเ
Euh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, comme je l'ai indiqué hier, nous, faisons, euh, 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 la, nous, nous reprenons l'usage habituel qui est que lorsque un témoin a été demandé par une équipe de défense, nous allons en premier et l'équipe de Nyonchea euh, interrogera à la fin de toutes les autres parties, donc en dernier, étant précisé que nous avons convenu de 20 à 30 minutes de temps en fonction de comment je vais avancer, donc je vais essayer de terminer ce matin en maximum 40 minutes et moins si, si c'est possible dans la session qui nous reste. Euh, bonjour Madame Peglevine. Euh, comme vous l'avez compris, il ne me reste malheureusement pas beaucoup de temps pour vous poser des questions avant que les autres euh, prennent le micro. Euh, donc, euh, je, il y a beaucoup de choses que je voulais aborder avec vous que je ne pourrais pas aborder. Euh, je vais simplement euh, obtenir quelques clarifications. Euh, J'ai compris euh, que dans votre démarche euh, scientifique, je l'ai comme ça, vous avez euh, euh, tenu à ne pas euh, partir avec un préjugement sur euh, le concept de mariage forcé comme euh, vous avez pu euh, euh, en entendre parler avant euh, votre étude et que vous avez tenu à euh, ce que les gens euh, qui étaient interrogés euh, mettent leurs propres mots sur euh, la qualification de leur mariage. Euh, donc ma première question est de savoir euh, est-ce que vous pouvez euh, dire dans le cadre de votre étude combien euh, de personnes, quel pourcentage euh, a indiqué euh, qu'ils étaient euh, victimes de mariage forcé. C'est ma première question et ensuite je Et est-ce que ce terme a été utilisé à un moment ou à un autre par les personnes spontanément spontanément In my entire sample, the word forced was never used. Je voudrais du coup rebondir sur euh, une chose que vous avez dit hier en passant et que j'ai revue en, en regardant mes notes. Vous avez euh, dit hier que euh, les gens euh, ressentaient de la honte quand on utilisait euh, le mot mariage forcé. Donc, ma question est de savoir est-ce que ça veut dire que euh, c'est une sorte de mécanisme de défense et que c'est pour ça qu'ils n'utilisaient pas ce terme-là ou est-ce que vraiment honnêtement et euh, euh, intrinsèquement, ils ne considérez pas leur mariage comme étant forcé. Parce que vous comprenez la nuance, est-ce que c'est est quelque chose qu'ils avaient entendu à l'extérieur et qu'ils le rejetaient complètement parce qu'ils estimaient qu'ils n'étaient pas victimes de mariage forcé ou parce qu'ils n'aimaient pas ce label a little bit more finely about my statement about the word shame. It was not until after the word force became an agenda at the ECCC. Let me, let me state that differently. It was after the word forced became an agenda item to be evaluated at the ECCC that people began to feel as if they were ashamed to tell their children about where and how they were married. That's the first part of my answer to your question. Um, and secondly, um, They did not change their interpretation of their weddings as being authentic, but they were concerned about how public they could be given the context of media representation of their weddings.
D'accord, donc si je comprends bien, c'était l'image qui était renvoyée de leur mariage qui leur posait un problème et non pas les circonstances dans lesquelles leur mariage avait été organisé. Est-ce que je comprends bien ce que vous dites ou est-ce que... Yes, that the shame factor became an artifact of the representation of their wedding in the media, particularly probably 2004 onwards. Again, I tracked my respondents, especially in that first very dense sample for a very long period of time, some for five years, so I could track their shift in their orientation and perceptions of the definition of their wedding. And a question that is et en rapport avec ce que vous avez pu entendre sur les mariages arrangés avant 70, est-ce que lorsque vous avez interrogé ces personnes avant que euh, cette notion de mariage forcé soit sur la place publique, est-ce que euh, euh, les gens que vous avez interrogés qui se sont mariés pendant le Kampucha démocratique, en dehors de la question des rituels qui est un, un élément important et je suis sûr que d'autres gens vont venir dessus mais est-ce que les gens euh, faisaient une distinction sur euh, euh, le, le fait que euh, c'était l'encart qui avait choisi, que c'était les parents euh, qui avaient choisi euh, leur éventuel conjoint Est-ce que c'est quelque chose qui euh, est ressorti de vos entretiens et est-ce qu'il y avait une différence importante dans le ressenti euh, sur la manière dont les gens parlaient de ce mariage Le fait que ce soit plutôt un responsable de village qui est choisi ou euh, quelqu'un de leur famille Parce que vous avez indiqué au départ que euh, le mariage, de toute façon, n'était pas forcément le choix de deux personnes, mais deux familles, voire une communauté. Est-ce que vous avez fait une distinction dans le ressenti selon que c'était par les gens, euh, de, par une autorité euh, du village ou plus, ou parce que c'était la famille qui euh, arrangeait le mariage dans le ressenti que vous avez euh, euh, eu ou dans ce qui vous a été dit par les personnes avec lesquelles vous êtes entretenus. Just to clarify, because I may have understood the very beginning of your statement, you're wanting me to comment on those who I interviewed who were part of my formal sample set who were wed under DK, is that correct? Oui, on va, on va faire ça comme ça. Je voulais mettre trop de choses dans ma même question. Commencez par là, effectivement. What unfolded in my research, it, in a way that was quite startling for me because I hadn't anticipated it, was that the longer I was immersed in interviews and travel with my respondents, the more the way in which people talked about Ankar changed. And that seemed to be, that seemed to be a significant factor in how they themselves experienced the arrangement of their weddings. So I think what you're doing right now is introducing the role of Ankar in the weddings. And what I found as introduction to your question was that the way in which Ankar was being presented as an organization shifted in meaning the longer I spent time with people who talked about their weddings under Ankar. And Ankar became less an organizational feature um, and more of a mythological or metaphysical feature of their experiences. 
Effectivement, vous, vous consacrez dans votre thèse un, un long développement sur les différents sens de l'encart au fil des entretiens et des différentes personnes avec lesquelles vous vous êtes entretenu. Et je fais référence aux pages 170 à 178 donc, du document E3-1794, ERN euh, en anglais de 000 euh, à 000482610 euh, Je n'aurai pas le temps de citer l'intégralité des différents sens qui ont été donnés par l'encart, mais effectivement, ce que vous dites, c'est que, euh, et ça vous le dites à la page 175 de votre thèse, ERN en anglais 000482610 et vous dites euh, que de moins en moins euh, euh, l'encart est euh, vu comme euh, dans le, le discours de, des personnes avec lesquelles vous parlez comme euh, l'organisation à partie et que ça, plus, que ça sort. Euh, de, du, du cadre idéologique et que c'est plus une entité qui a un pouvoir que parfois c'est identifié à euh, un dirigeant en particulier parfois c'est quelque chose de plus diffus donc euh, euh, est-ce que vous pouvez euh, indiquer à la chambre quel est le, le la définition de l'encart qui est revenue de, le plus souvent dans la bouche des personnes euh, avec lesquelles vous êtes, êtes entretenus. Euh, 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 Yes, I, I would like to digress yeah. for a brief moment <coughs> just to explain the method by how I came to some of my conclusions. So the form that I submitted this morning that was requested yesterday for submission, I, I want to clarify that was a data survey form. So how I came to that form, which has one question on it, that all 192 of my respondents responded to, and the question was, What is Ankar? Not who is or where is, but what is Ankar? I came to ask that question after analyzing uh, for nearly five years all of those in-depth interviews and travels and film material from my ethnography. So that question emerged. Uh, because I, I didn't set out to find, I didn't set out to look for that. I discovered it, and then I decided to, to get more data and information on that. So I want to state that up front. So this term I investigated across all of the respondents. Um, I stayed on page 175. That 22% of my respondents considered Ankar to be a leader in the sense that we see written in many historical texts um, the leader of the organization or the organization. Whereas from those 192 respondents, 48% of them gave Ankar a metaphysical orientation. Now, as an anthropologist, I needed to understand that. So, again, I didn't only look for content-based data. I had to look into the context and processes by which people came to tell me what they told me. Again, that triangulation I used in my methodology. Um, and so I went back into the literature to learn more about, while I was gathering evidence from respondents, about um, transformational spirits and um, the, the significance of a spirit-based Buddhist culture and how spirits protect people, how spirits transform, and how spirits destroy. I did a lot of, of in-depth research into that topic because what was, what was coming forward from the respondents was 
um, referring to Ankar as if it, it was a transformational force that at any time Ankar could appear and destroy. ไอ้ปนตะเอาการอัดในรูปเรียงเมาส์นะมาบ่มแปลกบ่มพลานยิงหนูเปนาก็มาตึกยิงเปนาก็มาตึกยิงเปนาก็มาตึกยิงเปน
Was there a headquarters? If it was, where, where was Ankar? What did Ankar look like? So at, at, a, at a time with so much chaos and so much upheaval and so much compromise to people's imaginations and so much fear, it's really quite reasonable to see how people would start then experiencing a particular kind of anxiety around this Ankar that had a particular force in and over their lives. I appreciate the answer of the witness. However, the question was whether she reviewed documents or spoke to leaders about the policy of the regime towards forced marriage, and it would be helpful to the examination if the witness answers the question asked. Thank you. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Procureur, de euh, son intervention. Je suis en train d'interroger Madame l'expert et si elle ne répond à ma, pas à ma question, j'étais en mesure de moi-même euh, la diriger. Donc, euh, ce serait bien que je ne sois pas interrompu dans le cadre de mon interrogatoire et que je puisse faire préciser s'il y a besoin de faire préciser. Euh, ma question euh, était de savoir, là vous venez de, de, de parler, euh, euh, Madame, Madame Levine. Euh, de la notion d'Ankar et de ce que vous avez fait comme recherche sur la notion d'Ankar. Ma question était, était de savoir, est-ce que vous avez fait, j'ai compris que ce n'était pas dans votre méthodologie, mais est-ce que du discours, des entretiens que vous avez eus euh, avec euh, les personnes qui vous parlaient éventuellement des autorités locales, est-ce que d'entretiens éventuels avec des personnes qui avaient une autorité euh, euh, au moment du Kampuchea démocratique, vous avez eu accès à des documents à euh, des instructions qui auraient été reçues sur la question euh, euh, du mariage de façon générale. Merci. Thank you, and I apologize for not answering fully the question that you posed to me before. Um, I did not speak to leaders. I had access to leaders' names. I still have access to those names. Um, but that, to move in that pathway, given the parameters of the research and the purpose of my research around investigating the phenomenon underlying weddings, uh, had me stay within the boundaries of the methods that I set and the ethics and ethical board ruling that I have that I need to stay within the domain of that to have done that would have fallen outside of the purpose of this particular, this particular study. However, there's scope for someone to move that study forward. I think it would be a brilliant study for someone to move. D'accord, donc je comprends de votre réponse que vous n'avez pas, parce que ce n'était pas le sujet, euh, euh, la manière dont vous abordez le sujet, que vous n'avez pas euh, cherché à avoir un, un, un document officiel du PCK, euh, est-ce que euh, sans recherche particulière, vous, aviez, vous avez eu vent, notamment au travers des dictons, euh, à, de, des douze principes moraux du euh, du PCK et euh, du notamment de, du principe numéro 6 évoquant euh, le mariage. Est-ce que c'est quelque chose euh, que vous avez étudié ou quelque chose dont vous, dont vous a parlé pendant, euh, pendant vos entretiens Of course, I considered all of those Mais principles because it was part of my literature review. Did people in my sample, samples, <laughs> did my respondents refer specifically to any of those principles? No, they did not. Um, je vous dis ça parce que c'est effectivement la question de la politique, la question de comment se déroulaient les mariages, par qui ils ont été, euh, comment ça a été appliqué sur le terrain et quelles étaient les directives euh, en haut lieu si on avait. C'est une question centrale euh, de ce procès. Et peut-être pour essayer de faire rebondir, je ne sais pas si vous avez euh, euh, à, euh, lire d'autres études euh, dessus 
ou d'autres interventions d'autres personnes à ce sujet. Mais lorsque l'expert Nakagawa est venu devant cette audience le 13 septembre dernier, voilà ce qu'elle a dit euh, un petit peu avant 15h06 et 47 secondes. Elle indique « Je pense qu'il y a eu une politique établie en haut, une politique tendant à organiser des mariages collectifs, mais je n'ai pas assez de preuves pour affirmer, pour affirmer qu'il existait une politique établie en haut en vue d'organiser des mariages forcés. » Fin de citation. Pour réagir à, à ce qu'a dit cet autre expert, est-ce que de vos études, de vos recherches, vous avez euh, également constaté qu'il y avait eu une politique ou en tout cas un, un, un mouvement d'organisation euh, de mariage collectif. Ça, c'est ma première question et je vous poserai la deuxième question aussi. Je pense que c'est à la page 8 en lettre romaine de votre, de votre thèse qu'on a abordé hier. ហើយរៀបការនៅកន្លែងណានៅពេលណាហើយខ្ញុំដឹងថានៅកន្លែងដែលមិនមានការរៀបការហ្នឹងគឺគេមានការបោះសម្អាតខ្លាំងដោយ
ដោយជាតិនៅគូនយោបាយប៉ុន្តែនៅដើមរបបផ្លាយបាយទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទីទី
Is she familiar with command, commandment number six? Um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, le procureur aura tout loisir uh, de poser les questions qu'il souhaite lors de son interrogatoire. Uh, Lorsqu'on a échange avec un expert, on rebondit en fonction des réponses et je rebondis en fonction de ces réponses. Donc, et comme il ne me reste pas beaucoup de temps, je vais aller sur les points uh, qui m'intéressent et je suis que le procureur aura tout le loisir d'examiner de, 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 tout ce qu'il qu qu souhaite dans le cadre de son interrogatoire. Euh, une euh, euh, question, parce que je suis prise par le temps, euh, une question, euh, euh, vous avez, dans le cadre de votre comparution, fourni spontanément un certain nombre de documents à la Chambre, et notamment euh, un document... Euh, qui s'appelle, euh, dans lequel plutôt vous faites euh, euh, référence à euh, un entretien que vous avez examiné euh, de CDCAM, un entretien que vous avez examiné euh, euh, d'une personne qui a été interrogée aux états unis et que dans le cadre de votre travail à, euh, à la Shoah Foundation, vous avez eu euh, à euh, examiner et à lire euh, dans le cadre de vos recherches. Et je fais référence donc à petit synopsis que vous avez envoyé à la Chambre qui a le numéro euh, 3 barre 10676. Euh, donc, euh, c'est les URL 01330847 et euh, 0138. Euh, je ne suis pas sûr que vous l'ayez euh, en main, donc est-ce que je peux euh, avec l'aide de M. Lucie de Dion remettre le document euh, à Mme Peglevay euh, pour euh, qu'elle euh, sache à quel document je fais référence Et dans ce document, pendant que je continue, je crois que M. Euh, le Président a hoché la tête. Dans ce document... Euh, vous évoquez le fait que euh, vous vous êtes rendu compte en euh, procédant à euh, ce, cet exercice de vérification, de traduction euh, des éléments euh, que vous avez en main en Khmer, qu'il y avait une partie qui avait été omise euh, dans euh, cette euh, déclaration euh, euh, prise par le CDCAM et qu'une des questions qui avait été omises enfin, était... Euh, Est-ce que vous avez été victime euh, 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 Est-ce que votre mariage a été forcé Est-ce que vous avez été marié de force pardon, que le, Vous avez mon exemplaire donc sous les yeux et que la réponse de la personne interrogée avait été non. Et que cette partie ne figurait pas dans l'entretien CDK qui vous avait été fourni à la transcription de que vous avez été fourni euh, par le CDK. Mais que c'est à la visionnage de euh, la version filmée que vous avez pu voir que euh, cette partie euh, euh, était manquante. J'en reviens donc à la question générale. Euh, euh, là, vous vous voyez même dans les interventions euh, de la Chambre des partis et de, je suppose des remarques que vous avez eues. Euh, par rapport à votre travail, il y a toujours un problème à euh, parler des mariages sous le camp de la démocratique quand on n'utilise pas la mention de mariage forcé. Est-ce que vous pouvez élaborer sur ce point et ce sera malheureusement ma dernière question, étant précisé que vous, vous avez indiqué euh, dans vos conclusions euh, dans le cadre de euh, votre euh, thèse que euh, vous n'avez pas utilisé le mariage forcé, euh, le, le, le vocable forcé, et que vous analysez plutôt le, le mariage tel que euh, vous les avez euh, euh, étudiés euh, dans euh, votre étude, que vous faites une analogie avec une sorte de service militaire. Euh, et est-ce que vous pouvez expliquer euh, quelles sont euh, vos conclusions à ce sujet et comment euh, vous déterminer Je sais que c'est une question très compliquée, mais malheureusement, il ne me reste que même pas 5 minutes pour, euh, pour, euh, pour vous laisser développer sur ça, mais je suis sûr que dans le cadre des autres questions, euh, des autres parties, vous aurez à revenir dessus. Mais est-ce que vous pouvez au moins donner euh, une vision synthétique euh, autant que possible euh, de, ce que vous, euh, de ce que vous avez décrit
Just want to clarify because I have two very big questions before me. One that's related to the submission of transcripts of court review that I had submitted when I was at the Shoah Foundation. I had the honor of being the inaugural fellow. I was brought there to help create the first database for Cambodian survivors for the Shoah Foundation. So do you want me to reply to that or to the question about my use of the term prescription or to divide it in half? You can divide it in two. You can divide it in two. You can divide it in two. So then I'd like to clarify about the role of DCCAM in this particular submission that I submitted. Um, because the clarification is very, very important. Before I arrived at the Shoah Foundation as the inaugural fellow, the Shoah Foundation, as a way of just trying to begin building a new index for Cambodian survivors, excuse me. Um, they had brought in some DC CAM staff to help them begin that process. And the DC CAM staff did two things. They wrote the interview protocol that they were going to be using. And they also interviewed two long Cambodian former refugee survivors. Because I was doing research still on the wedding period. Looked first at the questions that were being written because I was then going to be expected to take testimonials based on those written questions. And I questioned the integrity of the questions that were being put before the survivors. Um, and that document was changed. Then I had access to the filmed that the, the, the Shoah Foundation owns the film. I had access to the transcripts and the film um, that was done by the DC CAM members. And in reviewing that, it seemed as if something was missing to me. And so I encouraged the Shoah Foundation. We had many discussions, and they decided to get a second translator. Now, in the first translation, they said that the Shoah Foundation was going to be a second translator. In the first testimonial, the DC CAM staff had interviewed the person and the DC CAM staff member, um, um, Dr. Dr. Kosal Path. He was the translator of those transcripts. So his translation was sent to DC to the Shoah Foundation, and they were going to use that for subtitling. Um, but I encouraged them to get a second translation, an independent translation. The independent translator went through the original tapes, and what he did was he put in blue font things that had been changed from the original interview and things that were omitted from the original interview. It was then that I realized that there was a question in that interview about weddings. But the question about the weddings and the response was dropped out. If I might read. Mr. R was asked, how old were you then? The interviewer, DC CAM interviewer. I was about 23 to 24 years old when I was evacuated from Phnom Penh. The interviewer. Did they finish to get married during that time? Responded, no, they did not. So we are finishing another tape. I know by giving testimonials at the Shoah Foundation that I, as the interviewer, determined it was a digital film when I stopped the tape. So the tape was stopped there. When the transcript was translated by the DC CAM member, the transcript came back and said, how old were you then? I was about 23 to 24 years old when I was evacuated from Nam Pham. So we are finishing another tape. As a researcher, I would not have had access to that response about the weddings had I not been in that position that I had at the Shoah Foundation. And the reason I submit this, it may have just been an oversight on the part of the person who did the translation. But the reason I submit it is because it has been so difficult to 
access research that's been done on this period that I think has been research that has been neutral and unbiased in sampling and questioning. And so that is why I submitted this document because I was surprised to have found this omission as a researcher on this topic. That's the answer to my mind. First question, I was asked. Second, more briefly, that there may be time to come back to later. Yes, I came to the conclusion in my study that the weddings were, I used the term, conscripted. I use that term in a very etiological way. When one looks at the term conscription, it was a legal term in 1798. It has Latin roots. Sorry. Excusez-moi. 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 Je vous arrête parce que en français, j'ai entendu le terme forcé dans la traduction et je ne pense pas que c'est le terme que vous ayez utilisé. Est-ce que vous pourrez utiliser le terme que vous avez en anglais pour être sûr que nous ayons une bonne traduction en français In terms of the word I have that assigned to the weddings, the word I have assigned to the weddings is conscription. conscription. And the conscription is a legal term in 1798. Euh, une autre façon de que dire que euh, c'était forcé ou contre la volonté. Quelle différence est-ce que vous faites entre euh, conscrit et, euh, et forcé Je ne sais pas si vous avez dit que vous avez dit que vous avez dit que vous avez Returning to the Latin roots of the word, if you look at the etiology of the term, it means write down together. It was first used in Britain when they were gathering troops by writing down orders to put people's names on lists for service. In Australia, the term means national service. In the United States, it means selective service. The U.S. government has the right to conscript property in states of emergency. It's often compulsory in armed forces. People are released by the government if they are deemed to be conscientious objectors. But they must do civil assigned duty that's mandatory if they're released as a conscientious objector. Evasion is a criminal offense in most countries. Resistance is usually an offense. At least, my understanding is, in 44 states in the United States, there are penalties of jail, community service, if one fails to obey conscription. Globally, nine countries in the world conscript women in Asia, the countries Malaysia. I say in my thesis on page 14, the national selection of young men and women for group weddings and related prescriptions for sex, and the systems designed to accommodate the pregnancies, abortions, and births that came next. In many ways, I see that process, the original process of marriage as people doing a national service, is how I ended up interpreting that term. I can talk about it more at length later. Yes, I said that the time is over. Le temps m'est compté, il faut vraiment que je laisse du temps pour euh, euh, mon, mon frère de l'équipe Nonchia. Mais euh, un point euh, euh, sur le, le, la question de euh, conscription, et, euh, je, je tiens à dire d'ailleurs qu'en français j'ai encore utilisé, enfin, entendu le terme forcé, je ne sais pas si c'est le mot, mot que vous avez utilisé dans... En anglais, mais en tout cas, je l'ai en français, donc euh, je laisse faire l'attention euh, euh, pour les transcriptions. En tout état de cause, euh, quelle différence est-ce que vous faites, et ce sera ma dernière question, puisque je n'aurai pas plus de temps, entre euh, un choix qui a été fait euh, dans les mariages traditionnels antérieurs, en disant... Euh, c'est l'âge de se marier, marier et euh, on estime que pour la famille, euh, il faut se marier avec telle personne, pas forcément le choix du conjoint. Et 
avec ce qui s'est passé pendant le camp Putua démocratique, euh, en tout cas à certains endroits, où on dit, bah, c'est le moment de vous marier, euh, et euh, le choix est fait soit en accord avec la famille, soit sur euh, euh, une proposition ou euh, euh, dire de, euh, du chef de village ou euh, de, du chef d'unité. Euh, quelle est la différence dans la mesure où, euh, dans l'un et l'autre cas, si j'ai bien compris, les époux n'avaient pas forcément le choix euh, de leur conjoint Est-ce que vous pouvez faire, et ce sera ma dernière question sur ce point, et je laisserai ensuite la parole à In many ways, your question brings me around in a circle to your earlier question about Ankar. From the study I did, because I included being conscripted in many ways was being called up by Ankar for service. And that is my short answer to your question at this time. time. I will do contemplation. But there's a, there is a relationship between the way the term Ankar was being used in the way and people's experiences of loyalty, which is part of some of the principles I'm sure we'll talk about later. Um, and service. Et je, je fais une dernière, je fais pardon, une dernière euh, précision. Vous parlez de loyauté vis-à-vis -vis de Nanka. Lorsque nous avons parlé avec euh, Nanka Nakagawa, elle parlait euh, du fait que les euh, enfants ou les, qui devaient se marier euh, euh, se mariaient aussi. Euh, en reconnaissance et euh, euh, une sorte de loyauté vis-à-vis -vis des parents, euh, de leurs parents. Est-ce que vous faites un parallèle entre ces deux choses ou est-ce que euh, pour vous ça n'a rien à voir Et peut-être pour que vous ayez une, une réponse complète, est-ce que dans les entretiens que vous avez menés, les gens euh, ont euh, parlé de leur famille et de l'encart euh, euh, en termes de loyauté au moment euh, de considérer leur mariage parce que ce mariage était proposé à l'encart par les familles Thing to say, if I were to say yes, that I agree with Ms. Nakagawa's statement would be a surface agreement. Because what I'm talking about here is very dimensional and very complex. This issue of loyalty at a time when people were displaced and then their loyalty to families was displaced and then replaced on Ankar. This is a threat that is part of my answer to your question. But again, it's something that I have to say very complex. And I think the seduction, there was a seduction about how Ankar was represented to people in a way that was very, very disturbing, I must say. But there is something quite seductive about being loyal to Ankar for people um, in my study. Um, C'est avec regret, uh, Monsieur le Président, que je, avec regret, Monsieur le Président, que je mets fin à mon interrogatoire et euh, j'ai dépassé le temps qui m'avait été accordé par mon confrère et j'espère que vous ne lui en tiendrez pas rigueur. Il y a eu quelques complexités qu'il fallait, qu fallait avancer. Donc, je, vraiment, c'est de ma faute, ma très grande faute. Your Honor has given the uh, importance of the testimony the fact that I think we didn't get very far, and the witness has said quite a bit that uh, she would get to expand her answers later when actually that'll depend on the questions she's asked. I would propose that both sides be given an extra session that the witness be extended to two days. Question on the witness statement. Question on 
I'm not sure how much time we need. Of course, we don't know till we actually do it. I would say that I would like to do my examination until I see the schedule, which hopefully will be distributed. Sorry, the questionnaire hasn't been delivered. Sorry, the questionnaire. I haven't gotten it, and I don't see it on email yet. Because I want to use it, I want to put it in the email. Because I want to use it, I want to put it in the email. Because I want to use it, I want to put it in the email. Because I want to use it, I want to put it in the email. จะกล้ามาตอนคืนยังจังประเทศขยมจังปราปราสมโนกำลังสมโนนี่ได้เอ่อมันจะได้จะบ้าตาลูกสไลด์ตาลูกอาจช่วยกบปีเอ่อกำ
Voilà, je voulais intervenir parce qu'en fait, dans la version française, c'était un accord c'était un accord Now, this, this is obviously a topic of great interest for the public, and not, not all of the public might have read your book, so please understand many of my questions against this background. I think it's really essential that not only the chamber, but also the public understands what exactly your findings are and how you reach them in the end. Now, let, let, let me start where basically defense ended, which is another try to clarify terms. Because obviously in the public debate and in the debate in these courtrooms, among others, the terms arranged marriage, forced marriage, um, the notion of loving marriage um, have been debated and occasionally the lines have been blurred. Now you have just introduced a new term which is conscripted marriage. Uh, and I'll come to that. Um, obviously, so this is one thing. The second thing that struck me is that um, your questionnaire doesn't deal with forced marriage. And you have mentioned that a couple of times. The only two questions that can be seen as having a relation to that is the one question, page one, which says where you're told to have sexual relations. And in an even wider sense, what did you think Anka was? So, do I, did I understand you correctly that the purpose of the study was not to establish whether or to what extent forced marriage had um, happened in Cambodia during the Kyushu period? Yes, that's correct. Can you remind us what was the purpose of the study? Very short. The purpose was to be able to map the best of my ability the function and structure of the wedding across time and place under democratic and assist a better historical understanding of that phenomenon. Now, I want to go back to this before I actually ask you, so you know where my initial question is going, what findings exactly do you feel confident to make when it comes to existence, frequency, policy of forced marriage in the Khmer Rouge period? Before I ask this question, I have two questions before that. My first one is, I'll try again to clarify terms. You are reluctant to use the, for the term forced marriage. Um, you use the word conscripted marriage. Now, as I said, what you said about the roots, etc., is very interesting. But I think, specifically, for the benefit of the public, we should try and clarify exactly what that means. What, if any, is the difference in your opinion, in your opinion, how you use the words between a forced marriage and a conscripted marriage? Firstly, in the methods that I used, it was important that I only represent the perceptions, beliefs, opinions, experiences of the respondents in my study. 
ปีนี้แม้ชายตอบนังสำนวนบอกยอมการเฟอร์แบบนี้มันเหมือนนามเนี่ยเด็กยอมมาสเปเชียลไลท์ท้าอับกาลิการะบอกก้อนเป็นเฟอร์แบบนี้ดอกคอมโนเต้โดยเฉพาะเวียบีบ้านนะสำหรับขยมขนมกันตาไฟรูปไฟรูปโดยเฉพาะเวียบีบ้านนะสำหรับขยมขนมกันตาไฟรูปไฟรูปโดยเฉพาะเวียบีบ้านนะสำหรับขยมขนมกันตาไฟรูปไฟรูปโดยเฉพาะเวียบีบ้ I started to hear about people's loyalty to Kumar. I began to explore how the loyalty from family was transferred to Ankar. I began to get hints of and then tracked for very long periods what people really meant by their experience of Ankar. And in doing that. There seemed to be, especially since I was trying to get consensus in couples as well. There seemed to be many people. There seemed to be isn't the right word. Many people referred to their weddings as if they were providing a service to the future of the country. And it is because of that that I started to think about where historically, again, I'm looking at historical ramifications for what happened under DK. Where historically have there been times where there have been governments where there have been regimes 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 where Conscription. Now, you described conscription as being called up to arms, and um, if you didn't come up, you might be imprisoned. Um, now, my question is: Is this? Do you understand it correctly? Is this how you describe conscription? Because my, my follow-up question would obviously be, would, would in your opinion, this prospect of being imprisoned, if I don't follow the call to conscription, would you call that force for your definition, or the threat of force? Thank you very much. If I might disclose, self-disclose for a moment, <laughs> because given my age and my generation, I was a member of the Vietnam War culture in the United States when my friends who did not have the right to vote, they were 18 and the right to vote was 21, were being called up for the draft in the United States and went to serve or did not and went to jail or prison. Um, so, what has been difficult for me has been to hold the geo-historical places in the world where conscription is not a crime. For a government to conscript people into service is not a crime. So, I am holding right now that same right in my use of the term conscript for people in the wedding under the So if I understand you correctly, you are saying even if this marriage came about under the potential threat of a sanction, they wouldn't be a crime because conscription isn't a crime in certain countries. Did I understand this equation correctly? Yes, correctly. I'm concerned that I may have made a leap that I didn't mean to make. Um, so in that, let me clarify a little bit more finely. There were people in my sample who were conscientious objectors to marrying the choice that Ankar put before them. Some of them had no consequence. Some of them did labor that was forced. That was the consequence. Um, some of them, one of them, 
was sent to a prison. That was the consequence. We would consider that force. ចាប់ក្រមអញ្ចឹងលោកស្រីគិតថាមានគឺជាលោកស្រីគិតថាមានគឺជាលោកស្រីគិតថាមានគឺជាលោកស្រីគិតថាមានគឺជាលោកស្